G'day guys, in this video I'll be solving for you a constrained motion example problem. So let's consider the situation just here, where we've got this rod just here, and at the tip of this rod lies a point A, which connects to a rope wrapped around a few pulleys towards this block B just here. And we've been asked, find the speed of point A if block B is falling down with a velocity VB. Now the first thing I'm going to do to try and solve this problem is I'm going to define the distance from this fixed point towards block B as being YB. And I'm also going to define the distance from this fixed point towards point A as being a distance YA, like this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the length of this rope and differentiate to get an equation involving YB with YA. So you'll see what I mean. Well, the total length of the rope L is a constant, and it's given by YB, which is the distance here, plus this constant just here to wrap it around the pulley, plus this constant, plus a little extra constant just here, so I'll just write all of those constants as 1C, and then we're going to add this distance here, which is going to be YA. So basically the total length of our rope is YB plus YA plus a whole bunch of constant lengths of rope, okay? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to differentiate with respect to time. On the left-hand side, we're going to get 0. And on the right-hand side, we're going to get yb dot. And then this is going to go to 0. And we're also going to get ya dot, like this. So now we've got an equation involving the velocity of b with the change in rate of our length from here to here. So let's rewrite yb dot as vb, because we can easily tell this is actually the velocity of b when we differentiate. So this will turn into VB is going to be equal to minus YA dot. And you'd be tempted, or at least I was when I first attempted this problem, to assume that YA dot is actually the velocity of A. But it isn't, and let me explain to you why that's the case. So right now let me just box this off, because we're going to use this formula soon. YA dot is not the same as the velocity of point A, and that's because Point A is on the end of this rod, which can only swoop out a circular path. So let me just roughly draw that circular path in here like this. This is our circular path like this, and the velocity of A is actually pointing out in this direction. This is going to be the velocity of A, VA, and it's actually going to be omega r, right, from circular motion formulas. So in order to find omega r, we need to find the change in rate of theta with respect to time. That's going to be the next part of our problem. Okay, to do that, let's consider this triangle just here, okay? So it, it seems like a disconnected thing we're analyzing, but you'll see why it's connected in a second. Let's consider this triangle formed between these three sides, here, here, and here. Well, the first thing we notice is isosceles, because this distance is r, and this distance is r, and this right here is a distance ya. We also know that this angle right here is theta, which means that this angle inside here is going to be 90 minus theta. And what we want to do is we want to find an equation relating ya to theta so that we can differentiate. That's the game plan here, okay? So the equation I'm going to get will be from using the cosine rule. So we know that if we apply the cosine rule, that means that a squared, in this case, y a squared is going to be equal to b squared plus c squared, in this case r squared plus r squared, minus 2bc, in this case 2r times by r, times by cosine a, which in this context is going to be cosine of 90 minus theta, like that. That's going to be what happens if we apply the cosine rule to this triangle. Now, I'm going to clean the right-hand side of this up a little bit. So that just means that ya squared is going to be equal to 2r squared minus 2r squared times by sine of theta. Okay? So now we've got an equation relating ya to theta. All we need to do now is differentiate to get an equation involving theta dot. So let's differentiate. Now we could actually solve for theta and differentiate. We could solve for ya first and then differentiate, but I think it's easier to just differentiate this whole expression just here. So let's do that. If we differentiate both sides, we'll be left with 2ya times by ya dot. That's what happens on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, this will go to zero. Um, this will turn into minus 
2 r squared, right? Because r is a constant, um, times by cosine theta. But of course, because this isn't t, this is theta, we need to times it by d theta dt like that. Okay, so what I can do now is I can realize that this right here is actually theta dot, and this right here is actually minus vb. So let me just write that in here and solve for theta dot. And I'm going to try and do it in one line, so try and follow. So in this case, theta dot, and let me write it in, um, I'll write it in pink. Theta dot now is simply going to be equal to, if I divide everything under here, it's going to be 2 ya times by ya dot, which is going to be minus vb, minus vb, all divided by 2, oh, minus 2, minus 2 r squared cosine theta. That's going to be theta dot just there. We noticed some cancellation can take place. We can cancel that off, we can cancel that off, we can cancel this minus with this minus, and we're left with theta dot is equal to this expression in here. Now unfortunately this isn't good enough, we need to also substitute out ya, so we can find ya by square rooting both sides, and so basically ya is just going to be equal to, let me draw it in pink, if we were to square root this out, it'll look like that, ya is going to be like this, noticing that this positive square root is all we care about because ya can't be negative, and then we can substitute it into here, and we can say that theta dot, just continuing what I'm writing here, is going to be equal to um, vb, Yes, VB times by YA, which in this case is just going to be the square root of um, 2R squared minus 2R squared sine theta, all divided by, all divided by um, R squared, R squared cosine theta, okay? So we found theta dot right, in terms of VB and other angles theta, right, but we need to find the velocity of point A, which we know, as I described earlier, is just R omega. So we all we need to do is multiply both sides of this by R to find the velocity of point A. So let me write that in this final color. The velocity of point A is going to be R omega, and it's going to be equal to, we simply times this side by R, it's going to be R VB times by, let's see, I'm gonna, I can factor out an r from here, times by r times the square root of 2 um, minus 2 sine theta, all divided by r squared cosine theta, right? We can notice a little bit more cancellation now. The r cancels off with this, this, and this. So we can write our final solution as va is going to be equal to um, vb times the square root of 2 minus 2 sine theta divided by cosine theta. And that is our solution. That is our solution. Great, we've done it. Great, we've done it. Okay, now, in case you just skip to the very end, let me briefly describe the process we went through. First, we found a relationship involving um, the velocity of b with the change in rate of this length of rope. And then we found a relationship between theta and this length of rope. We differentiated to find omega, noticing that we needed to do that in order to find the velocity of a. And then we played around with the algebra, and then we solved for the velocity of a just here. I hope that made sense, guys. Cheers.